Hello again, everyone. This is Randy, your sewing machine man, and let's see what we got going on today. That looks like a Sailrite. What's that? SZ LSZ-1. Remember, we were working on this thing the other day, and we're thinking, well, we're going to be able to get this baby going. Let's see what's happening now. If I can do this with any kind of respectability, let's go. Well, here's what we know so far before we put this new part in. It has arrived, and uh, so far I'm uh, encouraged by the process because uh, the folks at SailRight.com couldn't have been nicer and more efficient and knowledgeable. I talked to Heather. Uh, she uh, told me about going and looking all this up on the site and getting the part number and help me uh, with that process to make sure I had the right thing. As you can see on the screen, there's just a bunch of numbers and it'd be easy to not know that that's number 42. And uh, that is in fact what we need is item number 42. Let me get item 40, 42. Oh yeah, and then over here, uh, Daniel, he was awesome. Help me get this thing going. You see item number 42 is a uh, needle displacement regulator assembly for the ultra feed lsc 3295 46 available I, th I thought that was pretty awesome you see these earlier models had these issues here with these poorly whatever i don't know made constructed poured but they broke the early models they said that the thing must be 10 years old huh? quite possibly it is customers had it for a long time but the newer models have this little gem. This is what came today from the fine folks at FedEx. And this little beauty, it's not steel, but it looks like it's aluminum or an alloy, like the frames of the Kenmore's. And the best part of it, it hinges there. See? It doesn't hinge there, it hangs off and snaps. So that's, that just hinges effortlessly. So this is what's coming in the newer ones. So folks who are scared about uh, a sale right because I don't want to get one because if they have those in them, oh my gosh. Well, as it turns out, the earlier models had this situation and they've uh, remedied it. Well, we'll find out. I'm going to put this in and uh, this is something I've done numerous times with other machines and uh, you can get it in there and then the next thing you see, I'll be an optimistic, the next thing you see will be this machine zigging and zagging and working like it's supposed to. So this is going to be part one of the part two. We'll get this all assembled and we'll see what happens next. Okay, so that gets us up to where we are now, which is got it installed. And I will say that the installation was a snap for me because like I said, I've done this a oh, hundred times because the early zigzags when they came with these brass gears, I should have I should have grabbed a brass gear to show you this before I got going on this. I'm turning to the wall behind me. Let's see if I have zigzag gears. Oh yeah. See these zigzag gears, you can get these for the side load machines that have the composite. The composite ones will break. They're plastic and they're wacky. Here's one I even took out of uh, let's see, here's this one here. So I got all these zigzag gears that go up here, and of course they all work on this. Uh, there's one that's composite, it's plastic. That actually came out of a Kenmore, I believe, some sort of a wacky Kenmore. But uh, this is uh, just one of those deals, you know. I've uh, I put these in all the time to salvage the old side loads that when they transform them from awesome all metal to let's put some plastic in. Got that all the time. So I've done this a bunch of times, it's no big deal. And to be able to put a nice part in there was really nice because uh, now we are zigging zagging. I like to sew on them a whole bunch to make sure it's not just a flute and go around in a couple circles. So, what happens on the inside here is, let's bring this a little closer so I can put the screws in the top so we can take a peek in here and see what we did. 
it was uh, so simple, it's not a big deal. So if you got an older one and it's been working, it's probably gonna keep working. But if you got an older one and it's sat for 10 years, 20 years, and that little hinged apparatus in there, right at the back of here, the little hinged apparatus that has it go left and right. See how that swings over and swings back? That's the part we put in. It pivots there. If it can't pivot, it'll just snap right off. So having put a uh, new one in there, let me get a little closer so see what's going on. Somebody out there may have this issue and want to see what's going on. There's a set, set screw in the back of the casting that holds this pin in place. There's a set screw there. You loosen that. This slides out, and you take uh, this screw off if you want to. And you'll take uh, these loose here and here, and then your three-needle position, that, that comes, slides out. And then uh, it come, it slides underneath, it comes out very easily. And then when you go to put it back in, put your zigzag and the left-hand swing like it is now. That's the left-hand swing here, it swung to the left. And if it swung to the right, it won't go in very well. But if it swung to the left, which is this position here, then when you go to slide it back on, you got a little pin under there you got to put in. It's uh, very simple. I didn't have any problem with it at all. It's pretty easy. So uh, getting that back in, and then you set the needle position. You know, needle position is so center, center, left and left, right is right. So when your needle swings, it doesn't hit on either side. That's pretty pretty uh, important. You want to make sure that everything swings in the right uh, spot. But then you uh, check. Uh, there's, there's setting underneath to make sure your top and bottom line up and get your needle close to the hook. And it's got every adjustment you need to make sure it's going to have a happy ending. So all things considered, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. And I don't have any qualms of telling the customer they're back in business and they don't have to worry about that happen again because it doesn't have that pitiful cast part that it had before. It's got a nice, uh, it's machine because the screw that holds the uh, three needle position that I was showing you, the screw here, the screw right here that goes in for the three needle position. That was very crisply machined in there. It looked real nice. It didn't look grainy and crumbly and crap all up like the original one that broke. The original one that broke, it actually, originally, it actually originally broke right there where that screw went in. It snapped off, and then this snapped off. So this little guy didn't have a chance, and it wasn't very well made. But that's the original batch from back in the day. This little guy here, it was, it was just hung up. It's supposed to hinge right there. But there's no making it go. So now it is doing what it's supposed to do. It's zigzagging. And the uh, whole experience, you know, I I'm not the most patient person you're going to meet. And there's all these variables. Of, is it in stock? Uh, is it going to be shipped in time? Is the FedEx going to bring it in time? Everything fell into place very nicely. So again, I just want to thank the folks at Sale right. Uh, they couldn't have been more more professional. Totally seamless. Called them up. They handled it in a snap. They shipped it out. The total uh, 5281 uh, with the part and freight included. And it was according to Daniel, and he hit it right on the nose. It came in 5281. And uh, Heather helped me. Daniel helped me. And we got the part. We got it installed. I'm going to charge the customer. 5281 for the part plus my labor because there's no markup on a part that's already got a markup because I didn't get a dealer discount because I want to be a dealer but they don't have dealers so that's disappointing but that's life in a big city so I paid retail for it and my customer is going to pay what I paid and not a penny more he'll pay the freight and it'll be a break even for me on that and I'll just uh, have the labor plus this wonderful video and the experience of telling you folks if you're looking for a sale right if you're looking for a used one know that this little guy is in there. Make sure it zigzags. If it does zigzag, chances are it's going to keep on zigzagging because that means that this part here isn't frozen. If you go to zigzag and this thing here starts jumping, chattering back and forth, well, whoa, watch out. It's getting ready to break if it hasn't broken already. So uh, watch out for that because you know you're going to have to get that replaced and it can be replaced. It's not a big deal. You can probably do it yourself if you're pretty clever and uh, mechanical. It's not a big deal. So... Uh, if you got a new one, I wouldn't uh, 
hesitate to uh, have you get a new one. I have been recommending sale rights for a long time. I'm going to continue to do that with the caveat of with the zigzag when the straight stitches don't have that problem. With the zigzag, know that that situation exists. Be aware of it and be ready to do a workaround. Make sure you get it fixed or, uh, you know, take the two screws off the top or ask them, does it have the new, uh, what do they call this thing? Does it have the new improved uh, needle displacement regulator assembly? Make sure it's got the good one. You ask a smart question like that, these people probably appreciate it and go, yep, you're all set. And then you can buy it with the confidence knowing it's not going to break. And it will zigzag like, like it's supposed to. Oh, I just had the thread up here trapped okay but it's it's zigzagging it's good <laughs> thanks